Over the last 10 years of building, tinkering, and repairing 3D printers, I've purchased my fair share of tools. Some have been great, while others quickly found their way into a pile of shame somewhere between the studio or garage. Between my research and recommendations from others, this has led to me getting a handful of tools that I love and find myself using very often. In this video, we'll go over my top 5 favorite tools. This was really tough to narrow down to just 5, but I wanted to do my best to try avoiding ones that I have seen previously covered. So with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. First on the list is my Nipix plier and mini plier set. This is one of the more recent on this list and was gifted from Steve over at Steve Builds around the start of our VZBot build series. I'd never heard of them before I saw him using one and now they are pretty much the only plier I will use with 3D printed parts. An Amazon review perfectly describes them as a blend between channel locks and a wrench which is what this tool has replaced for me. There's a locking mechanism that you push in to quickly slide the jaws closer or move them further apart. The jaws are also smooth which has been huge for not damaging printed parts or leaving imprints in them. I use them for a ton of things from inserting magnets and nuts into a printed part to gripping onto a hot end when replacing a nozzle, these are awesome. Any task that requires twisting or squeezing parts together, if they fit in this tool, I'm using them. Nipix pliers are up there in price compared to a standard wrench or channel locks, but I can guarantee that it's an incredible tool and one that I wish I'd known about sooner. Next up is my Omnifixo helping hands. These are made in Sweden by Johan Zita, hopefully I said that correctly, and were recommended to me by many in chat last year when I was assembling a stealth burner tool head. I was using a piece of VHB tape to hold an LED in place while soldering wires to it and trying to keep the part from moving around. I've purchased sort of the standard inexpensive helping hands a few times over the years and have always found them a total pain to use. Positioning things is always a chore, and generally speaking with tools, if I find them difficult to use, they just end up collecting dust. The Omnifixos consist of a metal base with grippy feet, four clips, and four magnetic feet. The combination of magnets on the base and the ball joint at the bottom of each clips makes positioning super simple. The clips have springs that are easy to adjust, and the grippy covering on the tips means pieces are much less likely to pop out when clamped. There was a couple of month wait when I placed my order, but it was well worth it and they are an absolute treat to work with. I've used it for lots of wires and a handful of PCBs, which you can get from today's video sponsor, PCBWay. With over a decade of experience, PCBWay offers reliable, high quality PCB prototyping and fabrication with super fast turnaround times. Bring your projects to life with CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding services. I recently ordered 20 PCBs to use for an upcoming Nerf-inspired blaster project that I've been wanting to build for years. With as few as 5 and as many as 10,000 board order quantities, PCBWay has you covered for any project, big or small. Use the link in the description to get a $5 credit towards your first order today. Third on the list is another that was recommended by chat during a live stream, which is the Pinesol Smart Mini Portable Soldering Iron. My old faithful soldering iron finally died on me after 10 years of abuse, and one of the things I really liked about it was how quickly it was able to heat up compared to most other irons that I've used previously. The two recommendations I was given were Pinesol or the TS-101. I opted for the Pinesol after watching a handful of reviews, basically stating that the two were very comparable, but the Pinesol was $20 to $30 less, and boy have I been happy with this decision. The unit is super lightweight, heats up in seconds, has quick swappable tips, and a nice little OLED screen for quickly adjusting temp. It can be powered with a barrel jack connector or a USB-C, which is what I use. Although I've only used it tethered to my workbench, this does mean that you can use it with a portable battery pack. It's also running an open source firmware called Iron OS, which gets updates pretty often. I've used this iron for all soldering and heat inserts the past five months and can highly recommend it. For number four, we have my Wera metric Allen keys. If you're 3D printing, especially building or upgrading 3D printers, your Allen keys are going to become your best friend or potentially your worst enemy. I strongly recommend getting a good set of drivers, but there will be times where you just don't have the space and you can't get in there and get enough leverage to use a full-size driver. I used printer included or other low-cost Allen keys for years and just assumed that all Allen keys twisted, deformed, and slipped the same way. Well, 
I was wrong. I've had these for a couple of years now, so I can't exactly remember who was the first person that pointed me towards these, but they are just built differently. Made of a hardened steel, they have a color-coded rubber sleeve, which provides grip and makes them easy to identify. One end has a ball nose, and the other features their Hex Plus pattern. This provides more surface contact with the screw head, which helps with transferring torque and prevents slipping or stripping. This was super helpful when building my Voron Zero, which uses a fair amount of M2 screws. Last but certainly not least is my Hot Air Wand or recently purchased Hot Air Gun. This has been a recommendation for a really long time, but it's such a versatile tool that I had to cover it. The thing I use it for pretty often is to remove brim lines or white stress marks that can be caused when removing materials like ABS from a flex plate. I also use it to remove strings, and I've even used it to repair broken prints by heating up both sides, melting the plastic, and then pushing them back together. For this, I've mostly used my hot air wand that is a part of my rework station. It's worked really well for the last eight years or so, but since it's attached to a big box, it takes up a lot of desk space, and it's why it mostly lives in the garage. A couple of months ago, I purchased the Ryobi hot air gun. I was excited to find this because I already have a handful of their batteries from my other tools. The good about it is that it's cordless, but it does take longer to heat up and doesn't have as much airflow. The convenience of having no cable is really nice and I'll likely keep the hot air wand in the garage and use this for the studio to quickly clean up parts. If you don't mind it being plugged in during use, there are lots of other lower cost options out there that will also work really well. And that has been my top five tools for building and working on 3D printers. I hope that you enjoyed this video and at least a couple of these were new to you. Links will be in the description if you want to find out more about any of them. Also, let me know in the comments what your favorite tools are and if you're using any of the ones I covered in this video. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel further, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.